You're tuning in to Geek Speak, a Geek Inside production. We're sitting with special guests in entertainment, news, and tech. So sit back and enjoy as we geek out together right now. Good evening, everybody. This is Geek Speak, a Geek Insider presentation, and we have a panel of guests for a Full Moon Features movie, Don't Let Her In. What? We did it anyway. We're going to drop the card here and let them introduce themselves. <laughs> hey, everybody. So hey. who are we not letting in? We don't want Lauren in. Yeah. Don't want me in here, but I snuck in. Yeah. You yeah. don't look so scary. <laughs> no. It's amazing what makeup can do. Well, let's start with you, Ted. Tell everyone what is uh, Don't Let Her In? What, how did it come about? And your and role in it. And your role in it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So I'm Ted Nicolau. I'm the writer director of Don't Let Her In. Uh, it. The, it's really the story, it's a supernatural shocker, kind of, a story of a young couple lives in a loft in downtown Los Angeles, and uh, to help pay the rent, they uh, advertise and bring in a roommate named Serena, who is an artist, uh, kind of a new age artist, who uh, seems nice at first, and Amber kind of looks up to her, but uh, very quickly... Serena starts invading every aspect of their life with some motive that we don't quite understand until much later in the story. And this launch is today, didn't it? Wasn't the, our part two was today on the 10th? Uh, launched on uh, Friday, last Friday, uh, part gotcha. two. So, oh. so basically, Charlie, you know, decided he wanted to start telling little short movies in two parts. And so this is one of the one of that series of movies fantastic and lauren you play the the bad girl yes i play the villain serena um yeah it was my first time playing a villain before and i really enjoyed it i'm surprised that's the first time what do you usually play i know i i i haven't i mean i've played like characters who are a little bit unhinged but no one who's like directly imposing harm on others, harm on myself, but not harm on others. Uh -huh. um, yeah, but like I think it's something that I would love to continue to con of playing. Yeah, villains are always interesting characters. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, I love that, Cole. How about you? Uh, I play Ben, the um, rocker boyfriend who is kind of very self-absorbed and not too much uh, into what's going on at the house with the ladies, but just kind of more focused on his weed and music. So that's, that's my character. <laughs> that's, that's, that's his bag there. <laughs> not so much music, but... Right? <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, Kelly, how about you? You're rounding it out. I play Amber. I am sort of the opposite of Serena's character. Serena's this very confident, um, sort of sensual artist. She's very sure of herself. And Amber is the opposite. She's kind of shy. She's really sweet. Um, she's a little bit naive, perhaps, because <laughs> he wasn't supposed to let her in. But she said, hey, maybe, maybe she's not too bad. Um, and she's sort of the catalyst for all this craziness happening. If she had just closed the door, then we wouldn't have had any issues. But <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. I, I feel like this is the sort of character I usually play, kind of girl next door, sweet and shy. So it was really fun. Uh, I, I definitely wanted to uh, to ask Ted, where did this story kind of come from? Is it something that you've kind of had in the archives and say, oh, I'm going to I'm going to work on this. Was it a dream? Was it where did Don't Let Her In come from? Don't Let Her In came from basically uh, when Charlie proposed this idea to me, it was to have a very short shooting schedule and um, to be as inexpensive as it could possibly be. So I kind of put my mind to thinking, where is one location that could act for the whole movie? 
uh, what story could I tell with a very limited number of cast members? And uh, what story kind of interested me? And so I proposed to him several different stories. And one of them was kind of based on the idea of a roommate from hell who really might be from hell. And, and that's the one he went for, but he hated the title roommate from hell um, <laughs> because it's a little too funny maybe. Um, so he proposed the title, Don't Let Her In, which was a really good title for the story. Uh, and that's basically how it came about was the, a very pragmatic kind of decision of how to tell a story with, as simply as possible so that we could bring to it as much production value and performance as we could. That's very cool. Very cool. And of course, folks, if you don't know already, you can go to the Full Moon Features website. You can get your subscription there. That's my personal favorite. The whole, you've got library and just tons and tons and tons of things to choose from. Um, but you can also, Meredith, isn't it as of today that it's on Amazon? I know today it's something. I think it is going on to Amazon, maybe today for the first episode and then one week later. And the, the difference is on the Full Moon website, it's 1080p, which is, you know, um, standard uh, high definition. And on Amazon, it's going to be in 4K. So it might even be more beautiful than ever. Um, and if you don't have the money for a Full Moon subscription, you can always get a free week and um, do it that way, you know, and binge watch all your favorite Full Moon films. Well, one of the things that I love about Full Moon is that, like, with the annual subscription, you're getting, like, DVDs, I think it is. I mean, he's got, like, this package. I'm like, uh, I think, Matthew, you asked Charlie Band. You're like, are you making any money off of that? He's like, ah, just watch the movies. Have fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, he was in, he, last time it was, like, a package of the, the uh, Puppet Master movies. Mm -hmm. uh, you could get a producer credit on uh, uh, yeah, the um, and so you always get more than your money's worth. So there's Charlie's plug. So Charlie, you know, thanks for sending the folks over. But, but Ted, what, what is, and, and then of course we'll get to everybody else with this same question. What has been your career? What other movies have you directed? Have you written anything else that we may know off the top of our heads? You know, tell everybody who you are. Uh, okay. So I grew up in Texas, went to film school, University of Texas, Came out to Los Angeles and um, started editing. Edited a movie called Tourist Trap. That was how I first encountered oh. Charlie Band. Um, uh, edited a bunch of movies for Charlie that when he was directing, like Trancers and um, some other films like that. Uh, got my first shot at directing with a movie called Terror Vision, which oh. um, is kind of a rite of passage for every healthy 12-year-old kid in the country to get totally perverted. Um, then went on to do a lot of movies for Charlie, Subspecies, the, the series oh. of vampire films, some children's movies, Dragon World and Leap and Leprechauns. And, um, you know, have had a pretty lengthy bunch of uh, possibilities working with him. Fantastic. Uh, I kind of want to switch it up a little bit for our guests on the bottom panel here. The, yeah, the let's get them involved here. The genesis story of you, like this career path into movies, was it something like this is plan A and I got nothing else or, <laughs> you know, what, or was this like, um, yeah, you know, I was just, dis I, I was discovered because I was, uh, I don't know, serving That's coffee great. somewhere and yeah, you know, I love those stories. Well, let's Who wants to go Kelly first? Time. Ladies first. Kelly. Okay, um, <laughs> I wish I had some cool like Genesis, like I was discovered in a coffee shop. I feel like that doesn't happen anymore. I, I would love that. Um, mine was a little more simple. I'm from Michigan and Michigan used to have some, they used to have tax breaks for films and stuff. So for a while, the, the film industry was doing good there and then all of that ended. But for a time I was hearing about all these productions and stuff and I was always a theater kid. That was my, like, I can't, I don't play instruments. I don't draw. I'm not talented in that way. But theater was always my thing. It was so fun. And I was like, plan A, let's go for it. Let's try it. I was a very ambitious child. I was like, mom, dad, I'm moving to LA when I turn 18. And they're like, sure. Um, and then I did my first feature film, which I believe is still on Amazon. It's called Love is Blind. Um, 
And it was a cute little romantic comedy. I, I played the lead and it was so much fun. It was just the the shooting schedule. I have issues with like normal people jobs. Don't enjoy it. The nine to five is not for me. I like the 12 hour days, just the rigorous shooting schedules. It's so fun for me. The, the like energy of being on set is so fun. So after that, I was kind of like, okay, when I have the money, I'm going to LA and I've been here for four years now and doing commercials, nothing, probably nothing you'd heard of, but you know, here and there we, you oh. know, big brand commercials and stuff. That's the, that's the bread and butter. And uh, yeah, just, just having a great time. Fantastic. Lauren, what's, what's that Genesis story for you? So I feel like I'm, I've, it's been pretty straight and narrow. I've, been acting in theater, little theater companies. Um, and, you know, when I was younger, I, I'm from LA originally. So I was exposed to the industry pretty young, just doing commercials from the time I was like eight years old. But then I took a break, I got braces. So that put me off <laughs> the hot minute. Apparently, no one wants to cast a 15 year old with braces. Um, so then I went to New York and studied theater there at NYU. And um, I was there for a, a little while balancing, you know, I was, um, did the whole, like, I was a server, worked behind the bar, I was a hostess. And it's funny, like, when you live in New York, and you're trying to be an actor, you kind of realize that it's more that you're coming home at three in the morning after working a long shift at a restaurant, and then waking up. 3 p.m. doing it over again. And you're like, but I'm an actor, but you're not actually acting at all. Um, so I decided it was a healthier life choice to move back to LA. Um, and yeah, I've been acting here ever since. I, you know, I actually, when I first graduated, I did a film called Aberrant that is on Amazon Prime. It's an interesting watch, um, very DIY. We did it right out of college. Um, it was really fun. It was, you know, like six people from my actual graduating class that were in it together. Cool. Like a time capsule into like what we were all going through in that time period. Um, it's fun. It's, I don't know if it's, you know, I would recommend it per se, but it's <laughs> like a fun thing to maybe watch if you want. Um, I did a show recently called Too Old to Die Young. I don't know if you've heard of it. Nicholas uh, Reffin was the director. He did Drive. Um, that's a fun one. That's a great show if you guys haven't watched it. Uh, I think there's only one season. Um, yeah, and I actually, you know, I was kind of toying with the idea when I graduated that I would maybe do the director route. So I was precocious and decided to get... 10 of my friends together and do a feature film that I had written and directed. We wow. drove the country. Yeah, it was insane. I like didn't really understand all the work that goes into directing. I was like, guerrilla style, let's go. Like got a DP, like a student from USC. We drove from LA to, uh, to Arizona, to New Mexico, to Texas and then drove back in 24 hours and like filmed the whole thing. And I was like, we're just gonna film everything. Like you guys are gonna be in character the whole time. Like we're just it's gonna be like a doc slash guerrilla style slash like narrative, like improv, go. And it's like, that is not how you make a movie. <laughs> so I definitely, yeah, just was like, I don't, maybe, not, maybe directing isn't for me, but it's been a while. So maybe I, I could, you know, Go back to it. Yeah, now, now that you've settled down a little bit, you know, yeah. learn, <laughs> learn that you need like a shot list. I was like, fuck a shot list. Like, <laughs> oh, like, go. Go. like go. Go. <laughs> action. Go. Just talk. Go. <laughs> so that one, yeah, that was interesting. I have some footage from that. And sometimes when I'm feeling really self loathing, I'll just watch it and I'm like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, but oh, you was, never cut it. Yeah, you never edited it. Nope. Oh, <laughs> maybe there's something there. Like, really, no. I, I no. Mean, <laughs> maybe I was actually thinking of taking the footage and like making a movie on the movie because there was some wild drama that happened between like some of the people involved. And I was like, this could be an interesting thriller if it's like a movie or if it's like 
a movie in a movie. So like the stuff that went down within the cast, like making that a psychological thriller. Cause to me, I was like, this is crazy. Like this dynamic wild. We can make, a, we can make a horror movie out of that. That's cool. Well, so you two are already connected here. Cole, what about you? What is your Genesis story? What, oh, is man. acting like plan A? Um, yeah, I always knew I loved entertaining people. Um, when I was in middle school, I think is when it really hit me. And I was in um, a choir, show choir, and my school's plays we were doing. I was Rooster Hannigan and Annie, and that was my first time acting in front of people. And that was fun. <laughs> um, and I just loved, I loved the performance. So being in show choir, I knew I liked to sing and could sing. So when I moved to LA, when I was 14, um, I, I, acting was the first choice, right? So I'm out here, I got a couple jobs. My favorite show was Criminal Minds and that was the first gig I booked. So I was super wow. stoked. Um, I was a host on Disney Channel. And then I got an audition to be in a boy band uh, for my music side of things. And then I got into that. So for the following five, six years, I kind of went the music route and toured and performed in this band and had a great time doing that. Learned a lot about the music industry and, and writing and being an artist. So that was a lot of fun. And then when it ended, I felt had this huge hole in my heart because I hadn't been acting in years. So I immediately jumped back into a bunch of classes and started just reading so many scripts and watching movies and, and auditioning again. And at the end of 2019, I was a part of a really uh, special uh, play production in West Hollywood called Famous the Live Experience. And it was a, kind of about the, um, the industry in the early 90s and um, young actors kind of being, um, you know, sexually abused and a lot of the kind of the dark side of the industry. And so we filmed that as a movie and, and it had a really like cult following. So that was really cool. And then I felt like I was on a high from that. And then the pandemic hit. So that sucked. And then the first job back was don't let her in afterwards. So, so excited. And, and just hopefully the train keeps on rolling. Where is that movie available? Is it available somewhere? It's not available yet. Um, they're in post right now, just finishing up. I actually just did the final ADR for them. And it's supposed to be coming out later this year. Wow. It was very, very neat. Yeah. Well, one of the common th themes that I heard from the three of you, Lauren, Cole, and Kelly, is that you've got some theater experience. Do you have a love for theater that you would go back or do you feel like, okay, I cut my teeth there and film is where I want to be? I would say for me, uh, more the, the latter, film is definitely where I want to be. I think theater is so demanding and not to say film isn't, it's just a different level. I don't think I would be ready for that. When I see people on Broadway doing like eight shows a week, it's, it's mind blowing the, the, the energy these people expend to do this. So I would love to get back into theater one day, but I feel like at this time in my life, I'm like definitely into film. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I would love to do theater. I could do theater the rest of my life. Um, I, there's something it's like kinetic energy that you have on stage with a scene partner. I mean, obviously in films and TV, you have the same, but it's, it's so of the moment and to feed off that energy and an audience at the same time is like, it's, it's so exhilarating. I mean, I, I crave it all the time. Um, you know, you get many versions of it when you're like in a scene study class, but it's just not the same. Right. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, at the LA theater scene, I mean, there's some plays like that play Cole was in. I, I heard of it. I actually really wanted to see that. I, I totally didn't realize that you were in that. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I, I was like, I, that sounded so cool. It, really, um, it was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but I think if I were to do theater, I'd want to be in New York doing it. Hey, Cole, how about uh, how about you? I will do theater for the rest of my life as well. I love it. I um you know, something I loved about music was you're on stage in front of that audience. Like that is just feeding off, you know, the crowd and, and the energy there is just, you know, unmatched. And also, you know, when you shoot a movie, 
it's the way it's done behind the scenes is very kind of chopped up. You're jumping from the end of the movie to the beginning and you're kind of all over the place. When you're able to do theater, you tell the entire story start to finish. So it can feel a lot more um, real in some moments when you've been able to go from scene one to now we're in scene 50 and I've lived all of those moments up until kind of the end. And, you know, you're, it's maybe more authentic than I just got my hair done and I've been in crafty for 30 minutes and now I'm supposed to be like, you know, <laughs> doing something crazy. It's like, uh, you know, it, it's different, but they're both amazing and I, and I love film as well. So, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, theater will always be, something on my heart and like always be doing it for sure. Now I'm getting ready to pop in here, but I always stomp on Matthew when we co-host together. Did you want to ask these guys something before I ask the next question? Oh, go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. I will take this, I'll take this opportunity real quick because we have a new sponsor. It is meridiangrooming.com. And if you go there, it's uh uh, you use Geek Insider as your uh, discount code. You get 15% off. We will have a spot coming up in the near future for that. But I wanted to throw that out there because we've uh, just got them on board. Got to pay the bills. Got to yep, pay the bills. bills. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, yes, Ted. Um, when it comes to the writing process for you, what did you start off in prose or you know was it always kind of like scripts you know what is that writing process like for you uh, as a prose writer i'm uh, interested yeah, we're both writers here so yeah uh, okay uh you mean like when i was young and into writing screenplays or like to, what's Just the process of writing a script uh, when you were younger and writing screenplays and stuff was it was it starting off with like you know the the kid uh during homeroom i don't know writing poetry or something or yeah i was, was the <laughs> little the the weirdo little folk music kid uh, writing poetry, angry protest poetry in high school, and then songs playing in coffee houses like a uh, little mini Bob Dylan uh, in in high school, and then writing songs with my rock band in college. Uh, and at a certain point, I saw a couple of movies that kind of changed my life. And one was um, The Seventh Seal, Ingmar Bergman's film, mm -hmm. and the other was yeah. uh, Fellini's Juliet of the Spirits. And a friend of mine took me, he took me, we dropped some acid and I went and saw those two movies. And I realized that yeah. movies could, uh, could change your life and you could, could take everything that you loved about music and everything you loved about writing poetry and put it into a movie. And, and on top of that, you had a camera and you had a crew and you had people and actors to work with. So I kind of switched over from, pre-med school to uh, film school, much to my parents' chagrin. Oh, my uh, goodness. And became a show folk, at, at which my parents hated the idea of that. Um, but uh, for writing a screenplay now, basically it's uh, like 90% uh, procrastination and 10% inspiration for me. Um, <laughs> where uh, I'll just sit and think and imagine what... I find uh, photographs on the internet to kind of inspire the places that might uh, be part of the story. Then I'll start just going, oh, here's an idea for one scene. Here's something for a character. And just just with no structure, just start typing stuff. And eventually then start moving that around into act one, act two, act three. And when I feel like there's enough kind of in information or, or I know the story well enough or the characters start wanting to speak in a more kind of detailed way, I'll switch over and start uh, working on the screenplay. And, you know, it's the first few pages are kind of torture to, to, to write. And then pretty soon the characters take over and, and the pages start kind of flying. I'm still slow. Five pages a day is kind of my good average uh, if i do that i'm happy now do do the three of you have like writing aspirations well, at all yeah i'm actually a creative writing major um, i graduated oh, from Antioch cool. university and mostly screenplays i've just finished my first draft of a pilot of mine so i'm going back in and working on that definitely i feel like that's the next level from acting to like producing and, and writing 
Very yeah. cool. Lauren, Cole, how about you guys? Lauren? Yeah. <laughs> um, so in quarantine, I, I kind of have been working on this pilot that I've had in my in the back of my mind or like been kind of working on for like about three years. Um, I did a workshop with the Sundance Lab this, you know, quarantine. And so I've kind of been working on my second, third draft. Um, it's loosely based on my grandmother. And um, I've been trying to kind of, she lives in Palm Springs. So I've been just driving back and forth trying to, you know, get photos and, and get like an oral recollection of like that time period from her and kind of bringing it back into the script. I'm, you know, it's, I get a little bit discouraged when I get to a point in a script where I'm like, I don't know how to rework this or I don't know how this can improve. So I kind of like fall off of it. So I need to just like hunker down and like take a week and just be like, I'm going to fix up all these little things that I've been, you know, meaning to do. That's awesome. Cool. Very <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, kind of like uh, how Ted started, I, I write a lot of music Obviously, I, um, I'm still a musician. I'm still writing my own stuff. So that's my favorite part about music is writing. So it's a huge part of, you know, me. And I actually was starting a script for a, a series for like an adult um, cartoon, adult animation. I, but I was writing with my ex and we broke up. So that's been <laughs> crap. Oh, <laughs> no. So, it was really funny. But um, that was kind of my first stab at writing a, a script. So, and I, I have one other idea for a, a film, maybe a series, but I, I met this guy. I can't say too much, but I met a guy on a plane one day and he just wanted to give me his life story. And it was such a wild, interesting story that I've kept in touch with him and I've asked if I can make his life into a movie or loosely based. And he said, yeah, so I'm definitely going to be working on that one day. And, but uh, I'm in that 90% of procrastination right now. So <laughs> oh, no. I want to know when I, when I get started. Get a, so get his signature on a release as, I know. before anything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So now don't let her in is on full moon features right now. Make sure that you head over there, get the subscription, uh, watch the movie, leave a review and everything. Um, now we've had a few interviews with people who've worked within the full moon features franchise and the schedule is always, oh. always <laughs> like you got seven days. <laughs> or something like that. Oh, that's a that's a expansive full moon, oh, big no. budget movie. Yeah. <laughs> what was that experience like for you guys? Yeah, and how long did y'all shoot? Yeah, seven days. Yeah, no. seven days. We started wow. out with six days, <laughs> six days, and I begged each of these cast members, Lauren Cole and Kelly, to please help me by being totally prepared when you came to the set and know your lines because that's the only way we're going to make this movie. And for me, I cannot, I don't like to work fast. I prefer kind of take, take it easy, go. But every morning it was like, holy shit, we have to shoot all these scenes today. Wow. And to their credit, they came so prepared that it made the job like a pleasure. Uh, there were some moments of terror, but uh, for the most part, Literally. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about for you guys? Was it like grueling every day? I no. think that's, the theater training comes in handy. Yeah, I bet. Like, I feel like it was just taking those moments of like when you're the focus that you need for theater production, just applying it to set for film. I don't know. I, th I thought that it was really like, and just the ability to like absorb, you know, after every day, it would be like, okay, go home, figure out what we're shooting next and like cram, 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 and then sleep on it. And then it would just kind of be digested and you'd, you'd hope for the best the next day. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I, I, I do background work sometimes and that's so much of just sitting around like waiting for them to call you. And this to me was e easier than that because you were like, you were doing something, you were constantly doing something. Um, especially for Lauren and I, we would just have 
scene after scene after scene after scene. We didn't get a lot of downtime, which sounds a little excruciating, but honestly, I really enjoyed it. By the end of the day, I was like, oh, I feel so accomplished. We got so much done. <laughs> like, I was energized. The day we did um, all the like gore, like the blood scenes and stuff, I was so amped up when we finished the scene. I was like, I got to call someone. I got to talk to my friends. Like, yeah, the energy just kept me going through through the long days. Yeah, yeah, same. I mean, like Kelly just said, they had a lot more to shoot than I did. So, you know, luckily that for me, I, I didn't have as much, so it was easier. But, yeah, I feel like it was just theater training helps and – it was just a good time and, and, you know, study the night before what you got to do next. And, and you got it the next day and, and Ted wrote a really great script and it's not, you know, it's not overly complicated. It just flows really naturally. And so the scenes, when you read them, it just kind of like they stick with you. So it's really good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um, so now I've, uh, I have asked this before because we love our actors here and, um, uh, for the ladies, especially, I guess, you know, sometimes you get those roles where you're all glammed up, you got the makeup on, you got the dress and everything, and then you get into a horror and they're just dumping buckets of blood and whatever on you. Do you have a preference? I mean, we've had some very surprising, we've had some very surprising <laughs> answers. <laughs> I feel like that answers that question's for Lauren because she got the most blood and and prosthetics and stuff. I think I mean I'm always gonna prefer the blood. <laughs> but the See, blood I'm surprised by that like meaty scene that's you know someone's either dying or close to death. So like I don't know, it's juicy, it's fun. Also, yeah. like, I'm so I'm I'm always so fascinated by like how they do the blood gags. Um, and just like how they make it work. I don't know. I think it's right. I think it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm a huge like sci-fi and like special effects fan. So being able to see that behind the scenes is really fun. Um, mm -hmm. I did <laughs> I did a movie once where I had to lay on the floor in a pool of blood for an extended <laughs> for an extended period of time and I will say that was not the, I would have preferred <laughs> more glam that day. Um, depending on the scenario yeah, I like the blood and stuff. It's really, it's really interesting to see the behind the scenes. Now, yeah. to, to ask before, uh, this is to to you three again. Before you got this this uh, this job, had you heard of Full Moon Features movies, and if so, which were your favorites at that time? Because I know, you know, we don't have Blockbuster anymore where you can just walk in, and that's how I found them and. So it, it can take the new generation a little bit to find them. So let's start with you, Cole. Were you a fan of Full Moon? Actually, I had not heard of them. But now that I have my subscription to the app, I'm going to be <laughs> – you know, I'm, I'm in now. So I got to go back. I'm going to start with all Ted's old films and just keep on rolling. Starting with Don't Let Her In, though. Right, right. Yep. Um, I didn't, I mean, I knew of subspecies and I watched it obviously and had such a legend and I was so excited to work with someone who's just throughout the year has been like consistently making solid horror. Like, I, I mean, it's all of our, I mean, it's like a dream come true essentially for people who like horror. Um, but yeah, I hadn't, I actually, yeah, that was the only full moon feature that I had seen. Um, but yeah, I, I just started Ginger Weed Man last night. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that. And Kelly, how about uh, you? Well, well I, I actually wanted to, to uh, revert back to Cole here because buckets of blood or glammed up? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, definitely blood. <laughs> I, you know, when I got the job at first, I still hadn't read the whole script and I just knew you know, the dumb boyfriend always gets killed or something. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm giving too much away, but I, I get the least amount of blood on me. So <laughs> I was kind of bummed, but it's okay. One day, one day we'll get that role. That's so funny. But yeah, go, going back to Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Okay, so I had heard of Evil Bong specifically. Yeah. I had not seen it, but my friends used to smoke a lot of weed and they were like, have you heard of this movie? <laughs> Evil Bong, <laughs> Evil Bong. <laughs> that's so funny. And but I never got around to watching it. And I was like, that's a that's hilarious. I wanna see that. Man, and then so I realized it was Full Moon. Oh, look at that. There we oh, go. Jesus and I got a couple of others laying around here, but yeah, Charles seems to like uh, the marijuana related uh, themes yeah. sometimes. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, now, what is your favorite genre to, uh, to watch? Hmm. Let's start with Ted. Oh, my favorite genre? Uh, would be kind of psychological thrillers uh, okay. and comedies, really. Horror films, I like horror films. At science fiction, I like science fiction films. Uh, horror films, I've sort of uh, been so disappointed by so many recent horror films that I still kind of think back to the films that I loved kind of years ago, you know. But but for me, a good crime thriller or psychological thriller is kind of the, the fun thing to watch. And, and how about Lauren Cole or, or Kelly? And I because I do have a follow-up question to that. Yeah. Um I think for me it's either I want to be scared or I want to be crying. <laughs> oh <laughs> crying, uh the dark and sad uh you know the potential of someone's life can be I'm just, I'm a sucker for that. Like fam, like a really dark family drama. Oh yeah. Mm, I'm going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree on that. Um, I like really sad movies. I don't know why. If it can make me cry, like I'm like, oh, yes, hurt me. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also really into sci-fi. I don't know what it is. I just love like outer space movies or like dystopian future. It, it like, it gets me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sci-fi for me is probably my number one. Um, psychological thrillers, mysteries. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite movie of all time growing up was uh, Labyrinth. George oh, Lucas, Jim uh. and you know David Bowie. Just those three minds coming together. I, I have that huge poster in my room. Just <laughs> that that world as a child. Just and all those minds coming together was the coolest thing I had ever seen. So just uh, ever since I've always have kind of been very much into kind of fantastical realms and such. So, yeah. Well, because the follow-up question to that was, is, you know, based on the favorite thing that you love to watch, is it something that you feel like you can act or is it like, is there a genre, a genre where you're like, that would be really stretching my skill. Yeah. Not those three. They have skill to burn, man. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I always see them. I always see fantasy and sci-fi, and it's so much green screen. And you think that like there's this epic thing happening, and then you see it behind the scenes, and it's like, I don't know, something like Jennifer Lawrence like standing behind a green screen. And I always think that would be kind of hard. That'd be kind of hard to pull off, like pretending to see all this stuff in front of you. But it would be a fun challenge. Anything, uh, Lauren Cole, as far as like pushing your boundaries, as far as your acting skills? I think it. I, I think it's both. I think like yes, of course, I would love to be in like a family drama where you know the most catastrophic things are happening to the family. I think like it. It would be cathartic for it to be in something like that. But I also think it helps me relate to like my own dysfunction when I'm watching something and I'm like there are other people like me or people that I know in this world. Interesting. So it's like, a, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a form of healing. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's, there's a bit of like fear and, and excitement in any kind of role. I would love to do everything for some reason. I feel like, like uh, comedy would be a little more difficult just because it's not what I normally think about, but it's also at the same time, since I'm scared of it, I want to do it even more. Right. So, so it's kind of that dynamic. Um, I definitely would love to though, to answer your question specifically, like I, to be in one of those kind of mysterious or sci-fi movies would be such a dream come true. So I, I'm not, 
I'm not afraid of that for, at all. I would love to do that one day. That's surprising, Cole, because you're so funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're funny in this film too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. I, I, you know, it's it's funny that I say that because I also at the same time would love to do stand up one day, but for some oh, reason, oh my like, god, <laughs> a, 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 a comedy movie for some reason it really does kind of uh, freak me out. Mm -hmm. Now, Chad, I did want to uh, uh, I did want to ask you something. When uh, when there are difficult scenes, whether it's working with these three or any other movie that you've worked on, how do you approach your actors? Uh, I guess I mean difficult scenes, meaning like they they might go, uh, uh, I'm not doing that. Well, or... either uh, uh, I might not be doing <laughs> that, or it's just it's like a really difficult topic. You know, it's like, hey, Lauren, you know. Uh, yeah, you might be getting murdered here and you really got to get into the, like the depths of, you know, uh, or, or Kelly, uh, you know, it's like anybody when you're reaching that and you're like, Hey, you know, you, you got to dig deep for this, for this moment. How do you yeah. approach your actors with that? You know what? I try to, uh, make my actors feel completely safe and completely free to screw up or, or try anything or, uh, and, and when, when it comes to doing something very difficult, uh, really just talk about it, talk about it, rehearse it, um, and see where the limits are. And in this film, uh, for instance, Lauren had to really go to some very bizarre places and, uh, she was kind of open to doing it and really uh, embraced it. And so all it took from me was just a little push every now and then. And for Kelly, it was, she had to go from being like the girl next door, Debbie Reynolds kind of character to something really, really out there. And it, uh, the same thing. It's like uh, if the, if an actor is willing to, to kind of go there, then all I have to do is kind of help them get there and help bring the camera to that performance. And in this film, Cole had to be, he was kind of like the character who's kind of the rascally boyfriend who's kind of an asshole, but because Cole is so basically likable and warm, it kind of took the assholeness off of the character and just made him like, you couldn't believe some of the things that he was getting away with, with <laughs> Kelly. Um, but there came the, the final scenes of the movie where everything got super, super intense and kind of the whole kind of believability of what's going on in the end of the film kind of rested in Cole's reactions. And uh, same thing. It's just like you create an atmosphere where everybody's willing to throw themselves into it wholeheartedly and you know, we got really, really lucky that um, that that happened on this film. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have really troublesome actors and, and they're a pain in the butt to work with. But um, on this one, we had no time for pain in the butt and we had no pain in the butts around, you know. Yeah. So uh, for Lauren, Cole and Kelly, then with such a tight uh, schedule that you had, did you have time at night to kind of wind down and go, okay, that's the end of the day, shut it off? <laughs> or were you, did you have to kind of stay in character? How, what was that process like for you guys? Ah, I know that I think I was staying in it for the entirety of our seven day shoot. Well, just uh, too, because I think it was like about the cram the next day. So it was like, let's just like be here. It's easier than like getting out and then coming back mentally. Um, I probably, you know, get, giving myself some self care isn't like my strong suit. I kind of am just like, go, 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 go. So after I went on a nice, after we were done shooting, I went on a nice little like, mini vacate at Palm Springs and like <laughs> you needed that. Yeah, I mean that must have been rough for the for the family, you know, just to be like, okay, when are we getting Lauren back? You know? <laughs> My poor fiance, like 
Also, there was, I mean, you know, of course, when you're shooting something so much, like it, it, when it rains, it pours. And it was like, sometimes I would have to like go home and like do an audition at like 11. And I was, and like, I was like, oh, I'm all right. like, let's go. Whoa. Like, you're just kind of like a, <laughs> like a warrior. It's kind of. It's yeah. Cool. Well, Cole, how about you? I mean, did you kind of stay in character knowing that this was such a, a rough, tight schedule? Um, or were you able to shut it off at night? I mean, I guess it, it kind of carried over. We, we, we would get done at late at night. So as soon as I got home, I'd pass out. And then you wake up in the morning and start really like going over what I'm doing. So I'm already in the mindset of Ben, kind of just making sure I know what the hell my lines are for the day. So it kind of is, you, you kind of just got to stay in the mindset. Luckily um, for Ben, it's not too much of a different person than I am already. So I just had to be a little less uh, sweet and a little more dickish <laughs> than, I, than I kind of am um, at a core. But yeah, it was, it was definitely so – it's very – Fast paced shoot. So you wanted to you want to stay as close to those characters as possible. Yeah. I I don't know. I that's a good question. I feel like I sort of turned it off. I feel like when I was like here with the other actors and with Ted, then I could like switch it back on. But I feel like I needed those like that downtime. Like I might drive home, I would like blast music and be like, <laughs> I'm me again. <laughs> <laughs> and then just go home and like, yeah, eat a ton and like pass out and just get ready for the next day. Um, yeah, so I feel like I almost had to turn it off um, a little bit just to like shake it loose and then come back. Because otherwise I feel like my performance would get really stale because I'd be like trying to keep going and going in this mode. And I'd be like, no, I need to like a hard pause, a hard break and then come back. So yeah, but it was it was awesome to have such a tight schedule and and be going for so, so long. Yeah. Now, now, I got yep, go ahead, Matthew. Being a, a, you know, a horror director, being with Full Moon Features for so long, um, is there any one place that you would just love to be able to film at? Is it any, you know, doesn't matter what it is. You know, uh, I've, I've been really lucky in that I got to go to Romania back uh, right after the revolution, um, like 1990, and to shoot the subspecies films. And uh, going to a foreign country kind of opens your imagination in a way that shooting in the States doesn't. Uh, so for me, shooting in Romania was like a, you know, for 10 years, I was there a couple, two or three months every year shooting films. And it was, phenomenal i would like to go i've shot in italy and i love shooting there any place there is like awesome architecture or ancient ruins uh for me are the places for horror films to be told the place i haven't gotten to go and i'd love to would be ireland because uh, i think the 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 landscapes there and the weather there and the the castles uh would be really inspiring too mm -hmm. And we had a question here. Alan asked, when does this come out? And well, Alan I, I can answer that. <laughs> yeah. So, so this, don't let her in, you guys. Go to Full Moon Features. All right. Get the subscription. Check them out because they've got a lot of stuff over there. Get the app. Get the app. Yeah, first. Get the app. Yeah. It is, from what I'm reading here, a sensual two-part horror film. Uh, now, the first part was released on April 30th, but uh, the second part, Amazon Prime Video, you can find it on Roku, uh, Amazon Fire, Google Play, X1, May 10th, today, yeah, today, so it's real. already there. Yeah, it's part two on Amazon I, already, I too? do believe so. Following wow. its 10-day full moon feature exclusive run, episode one of... The Rosemary's baby-esque tale of terror will debut across all full moon features channels. Okay, no, I'm sorry. It, it is episode one. Episode one. So yep. so yep. you might want to wait till you can get episode one and two. And, and two. Then watch them straight through so you can have like a more cinematic experience. Yep. So I am I I stand corrected. That is episode one that is available right now. Uh episode. Well, the second part. Right. Get your full moon features. Subscribe. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and watch mm -hmm. both. This is just if you want to watch it on Amazon, folks. 
Um, but if you want to watch it tonight, you can go and see it at Full Moon Features. Your subscription service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, that is, uh, I mean, we're getting close to our hour and we've got you guys here. Um, normally, we have one final question that we ask our guests. And Matthew, I've been practicing. Aha. All uh, right. I've been practicing because I used to trip over this at one a little bit. And we're going to go around the, the panel here. So if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice. <laughs> oh, my what God. That that we're going to leave you for last because yeah, okay. I love that reaction. <laughs> Or maybe Cole is a song, I don't know. All right, who who's got their answer? That's a hard question. That is a super hard question. Yeah, because they're oh, they're so old oh, regrets. I have many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have things that like could be regrets, but I, and I'm, I always like to be like, oh, but it made me who I am. So I'm so thankful. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So, and you're too young to have too many regrets yeah. yet, you know? <laughs> um, man, I don't know if uh, Lauren wants to go first here. I feel like this is a you question. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like oh, you thought about this. I feel like uh, this is a whole question. Oh, man, is it? Not to put you on the spot, but I feel like you just have <laughs> I think I would tell myself um, to not stop acting when I had my run in the band in music. I would have, I would have continued uh you know, auditioning and stuff. I, I technically couldn't contractually, um, but I would have fought harder to change that contract. So I could have been acting those years as well, but still had a great time and learned a lot in those years, but uh, definitely wish I wouldn't have stopped. That's Was there time? Would there have been time to do that? I mean, not really. So, so that's a bummer, but I, I could have made time. I could have figured it out. I don't know. Yeah. All right, who's next? Who's brave? Who's the brave soul? I have mine. I have, I have three. Okay. Hey, you're only supposed to have one. I have three. They kind of go together. They're all like a like a package deal. Okay. I would tell myself, start wearing sunscreen more every day. <laughs> every day. I only started doing this recently. I would say start wearing sunscreen, stop drinking, and stop worrying so much. Just like calm down. Everything's mm -hmm. going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. good. Yeah, we'll let you bend the rules for those. Thank you. <laughs> I would actually say drink more. No, <laughs> have way more fun in your youth. Like, go absolutely ham because I just turned 30 this year and I'm like, shit is real, shit has gotten real, life is real, and now I feel like an adult. And I'm like, I should have like just done more spontaneous things in my college years and in my 20s like why was i so focused on career yeah I've done it you still all, right, ted. all right ted we're digging into the archives oh here. boy <laughs> uh you know what it's simultaneously i would say uh, uh to my younger self write more don't stop writing but simultaneously i would say have more fun too uh and take some time off from uh, work brain because I'm so focused on, I love working so much that, that um, sometimes I forget that I also love just fucking off and doing nothing. <laughs> so, um, exactly. So, but I think uh, I would say write more, focus more on kind of broadening my horizons, maybe uh, try to do more comedies and um, fantasy films too, you know? Oh, wow. So now where can people follow you guys and what are you working on next? Because you guys are all hustling. So I know that you don't have much of a break. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly. Yep. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Kelly ASAP. Um, or what? You changed your... Know. Stop, Ted. You're embarrassing me. I have two Instagrams. <laughs> well, what Kelly... was it before? <laughs> well, I have two. So Kelly ASAP is my professional one. 
And then I have one called uh, Pole, P-O-L-E, Pole.Princess, because I used to be a pole dancer. And so I had all these pole videos and then that just went away and now it's just like my regular Instagram. So you can follow me on either of those. Hopefully, I mean, another film next, um, commercials, uh, the, the pilot I'm writing, just, uh, I'll just keep going. Hopefully you'll just see me out there. Fantastic. Lauren. You can follow me on at, or at Lauren A. Doctor on Instagram, L-O-R-I-N-A-D-O-C-T-O-R. Um, right now I'm actually getting my master's in clinical psychology. So I'm like <laughs> trying to balance acting and doing that. So I think I have like a, you know, bit of time before I, you know, book the next thing I book. Don't know what that'll be. Hopefully something soon, but yeah. So that, that's, that's the whole adulting thing. I totally get that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, girl. <laughs> All right. Cole, how about you? Where can people follow you and what are you working on next? Oh, goodness. Uh, on Instagram and Twitter, you can follow me at Cole Pendry, C-O-L-E-P-E-N-D-E-R-Y. Um, my next projects, I'm working on my next album or EP or whatever the body of music is going to be uh, labeled as. But um, I'm going to New York in a week or this weekend to work with some producers out there and get that going. Um, I've never created in New York, so I'm excited to kind of get that and see that energy and everything out there. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to be trying to write that one script I was talking about. So we'll see. I'll get his, I'll get his uh, signature on that. Well, Nicole, I have to ask you, is this a solo or do you have a band? Give the band a shout out. Yeah. Well, so my, my music pseudonym is Ryder, R-Y-D-Y-R. Ryder is my mother's maiden name. And when I do play live, I have a band. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be touring soon as, as soon as the world is a little healthier. But yeah. What's, you can, what's that? Go ahead. A website or Instagram for the band or anything? Oh, yeah, writerofficial.com, R-Y-D-Y-R official.com. Sweet. Cool. Ted, where can people follow you, and what uh, are you working on next? What, okay, what can you we follow see? me at uh, Facebook, Ted Nicolau, or Instagram, Ted Nicolau. <laughs> really creative. Uh, and uh, next, uh, we're basically uh, planning to go shoot uh, Subspecies Number 5, the prequel to oh, the Subspecies series, um, looking like uh, probably September, October, something like that, in Serbia. Uh, because Ooh. Romania, which we pioneered, has gotten to be too expensive for, for our movie making. Right. So uh, Serbia, we've got some uh, partners in Serbia that, uh, you know, so I'm working on that. Uh, writing a script for another production company right now uh, that I started before we started this one and had to put it aside. And now I'm trying to get back into that frame of mind for a um, little creature feature. And uh, that's about it right now. All right. Right. And definitely, and, uh, you can definitely have to come back once you even start filming on that. We'd love to get, you know, a, an update halfway through, especially on location. Yeah, definitely, you know, man. You know, you, you could really use a more interesting Instagram. So, Kelly, you're not using your your pole dancer one. You know, you <laughs> yeah. can, we go. You can have pole princess. Yeah, right. pole princess. That would get me a lot of followers. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it might. It might. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm I, I have, that from you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did have one more question because there are some places that are opening up, uh, you know, so going to like conventions and things like that. Have you thought about maybe going to the Comic Con or like Spooky Empire and things like that? Um, I love going to conventions myself and, and we get invited sometimes, but I guess because subspecies is kind of like an old franchise. Uh, we don't get invited as much as we'd like to be invited. Um, we're hoping maybe with subspecies five, you know, then uh, me right. and Honest Hove and Denise Duff could kind of show up at some conventions and meet people because it's we find that to be a really fun experience. Maybe with Don't Let Her In, uh, we'll get invited someplace depending on the crowd reaction to it. So, yeah, I mean, conventions are cool. I love them. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys go to the conventions and stuff? I would love to be invited. I have not gone. I think mostly just financially. I uh -huh. haven't been able to fit that into my budget. But that, if we got invited, that would be so fun. I love conventions. Yeah, they're really fun. 
Yeah, I love conventions. I got to go to one Comic Con in Vegas, and it was uh, right before Stan Lee passed away, the creator yeah. of Marvel. I got mm -hmm. to see him speak, and that was really inspiring and cool. Um, but yeah, just I love I love conventions as well when everyone dresses up and the cosplay, and just you see how much these you know creations of art and these films and these shows mean to people. You know, it's it's really touching and powerful. So it's just one of my favorite environments for real. Mm -hmm. That's how this whole podcast yep. got started. Yep, yep. Lauren. Yeah. First, this would be a first. I mean, oh, wow. I've seen pictures of Comic Con, and I'm always envious. It looks really fun. Well, we appreciate you guys uh, popping in and having this discussion about uh, uh about don't let her in, you guys. Ooh. Full moon features. Don't let her in. Thank you to our guests, Ted, Kelly, Lauren, Cole. We appreciate you for being here, Thank everybody. Thank you. Hey, thank you for having us. Yeah, spread the word. Geek out, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. And make sure you head over to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and share it out with your friends. Cold yeah, because well, I mean, because if you don't, I'm I'm telling you guys, you better turn in your geek cards. I mean it. All right, here we go. At Geek Insider, we foster relationships with those in the geek sphere so we can give our audience this insider view of entertainment, tech, and more.